Hey guys, so today, obviously by the title of the video, um, I'm going to tell you guys a little bit of my experiences about binge eating and how I have overcome it. Now, binge eating disorder is what I was diagnosed with, so this is pretty much when you eat until you feel like you're going to throw up. Sometimes you throw up. Um, you eat to the point of like super uncomfortable and then you like filled with this extreme guilt, this I'm gonna go to the gym tomorrow for like three hours and then to like burn it off and this is bullshit, okay? So binge eating in my personal experience and opinion, I'm not like a registered dietitian or a psychologist or whatever, I'm just a person that has been through this and has done really well recovering from the binging uh, is A, you're dieting or B, you're super stressed out. So if you're dieting like I was, um, I was dieting extremely hardcore. I was like counting 900 calories every single day, working out for two hours every single day, nonstop. Like I dropped 80 pounds in three, four months and that doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that is way too much, way too fast. And I gained it all back, obviously, because my body's starving. So, first, if you are in the category of dieting, I and anyone really who has any sort of issues around food, like you do feel guilty after you eat food, or you're like, oh, I shouldn't have this, bullshit. What you gotta do is you got to learn intuitive eating. This has saved my life. I cannot say it enough. Intuitive eating has made me feel okay around food. I still get panicky about some certain things, but that is because I've only been on this journey since April, and it's October. And, you know, intuitive eating helps um, create a healthy relationship between yourself along with the food that you eat, because one meal isn't gonna make you bad, like one meal isn't gonna make you good, like it's just food, get over it. And it helps also with body acceptance and everything like that. So intuitive eating, there's a book, there's like a normal reading book and a workbook. I suggest getting both and working on them together, like next to each other. And um, that is honestly what I've done and it's been amazing. There's also really good Facebook and Instagram support groups. I recommend getting a lot of body positivity people starting to go on your feed that you watch all the time, weed through your social media, like don't be looking at like all these Photoshop skinny models you know like that is not all what real bodies look like some bodies may look like that naturally but a lot of them don't so that's what I personally done and has helped a lot uh, problem number two is stress that is also another issue that can be resolved with intuitive eating also with intuitive eating you have to look within yourself which is hard and it takes a lot of time, it takes a lot of effort, it takes a lot of patience, and once you start getting it, it's really liberating, honestly. Like, you feel really good. Um, for me, I am a very stressful person. I feel a lot of people's energy. Like, that sounds really weird and hippie of me, sorry. Like, I'm a very sensitive person. I, like, feel a lot of things very easily. So for me, I am really easy to get stressed out, and um, this also made me ca like caused me to overeat a lot, have a really bad relationship with food. I would binge, and I'd be like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna go like work out for five hours tomorrow so I can work it off." Like all this garbage. You just gotta address what's going on inside of you. You got to address um, because that's where most of the troubles is is inside you. It's not external. Our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years have never needed calories, points, macros, or anything to keep what their body's healthy weight is. And my weight right now is normalizing. I'm not celebrating or bashing the idea. It's just what my body's doing and I'm accepting what it's doing and I'm, I'm okay with that, man. Because honestly, I'd be a little, I would want to be a little bit more chunky, which I'm completely okay with. And eat like cupcakes and ice cream and happy food but also nourish my body with like salads and tempeh tomato and lettuce sandwiches that's what I'm gonna have for dinner I'm so excited um, and things like that so it's really just about tuning in to yourself really checking in with yourself every single day some people find writing a journal is very helpful for me this didn't work too well because I started using it as another way to restrict 
So like I said, be very, very careful. Another thing to do is create a really nice support group. As much as I love my family, sometimes they don't necessarily know everything that's going on. And this especially includes um, family that I don't see very often. Like, I, when I was younger, I used to change my eating up like a whole lot. I still kind of do because I get bored very easy. But I was like vegetarian and vegan and then I went paleo and then I was like vegetarian and vegan all over again. But that was to restrict weight. Now I'm finding my body's naturally gravitating towards vegetarian ideals. But obviously, if I really want a cheeseburger or like salami or something, then I'm going to eat it and it's going to be fine. I'll just make the smart choices about it since I've been so educated about my food and what the animals go through to make the best local, unprocessed, and humane choice possible. But making sure to nourish your body and eating whatever you want. Like, and this includes when you're starting from a really, really rough eating disorder, okay? Like, I gained all this weight back within less than a year which is a lot of weight <laughs> to suddenly gain back. And for a while, for a few months, my uh, weight has been maintaining really, really well, which is great because that's never happened to me before. Usually I'm just like gaining, losing, gazing, losing in this horrible yo-yo cycle that nobody likes. Um, you know, diet, die. Like you're gonna feel like garbage. Another thing I found um, going through binge eating disorder for me is sometimes I get an urge to restrict and when there's points like this, you need to address something else that's going on in your life. Because let's be honest, let's be honest for a minute. Counting calories is not fun. Counting points is not fun. Counting carbs, macro, fat, blah, blah, blah. That stuff is not fun. So if you're feeling like you need to restrict something, something in your life needs to be addressed. For me, this has happened a lot the past two weeks. Someone commented about my eating and, a really, and my weight in a really negative way. And it really was triggering and it was horrible and and then I was like I need to restrict I need to restrict, need to restrict. and I'm like Shannon no you don't need to restrict what's going on what is going on in your brain right now I had my college finals my college has contacted me about my loans which doesn't make sense because they're saying I owe money and I don't because of my financial aid but that's a whole other thing my work has been kind of pushing on the hours that I have for the max set point um, just, you know, because I'm in full-time college, I want to make sure I have enough time. So, that's been happening. I just recently got a new car. All these other stresses, and I wish I had more control over my life. And that is what made me want to keep restricting. And as soon as I addressed that, the entire feeling went away. Which is really, really good. Um, don't ever give up hope on this sort of thing. It takes a lot of time, a lot of practice, and a lot of patience and dedication. It is way easier to track your food in your app and deal with the emotional turmoil later and later and keep binging and just deal with it as it comes. It's not easy to look inside yourself. It's not easy to intuitively eat, but it has the biggest payoff you will ever see in your entire life. Like for the other day, for instance, I have always felt like I need to finish what is on my plate. There's people starving. So stuff on my plate that's going in the garbage is going to help starving people, or if I eat it, how is that going to help starving people? So little things like that, like leaving a little bit of food on your plate if you are truly not hungry. Like if you eat and then you still have food on your plate, save it for later. Like woohoo! Leftovers? Who doesn't love leftovers? I love me some leftovers. Um, it's just little accomplishments like that, and especially if you get the workbook. Um, that'll really, really help. That is like lifesaver along with like the Facebook support groups. So I hope you like my tips today about how to stop binge eating. It has been a really big journey for me. It has been insane. I am nowhere near perfect. Nobody's perfect. Like, I mean, just the other day I was like, should I get this? And I was like, girl, this is what you've wanted for two days. Of course you're gonna get it and you're gonna like it and enjoy it and not chow it down in two seconds. That is also another tip, is to just enjoy your food and be mindful about it. I try to a lot 20 minutes in the morning or whenever I eat to just focus on eating, no computers. Anyways, I hope you guys liked this video. I hope there was some helpful hints and tips and tricks. And if you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button, comment, hit the bell. You guys know the drill. And I will see you guys later. Toodles.